Rob Wolfinski on behalf of her. My name is Darren Denison. Here to answer any questions you might have. Do a little description here. She has a hollow blow pipe. It's like a giant stainless steel straw. She took a gather of fresh glass off of our out of our furnace. And I'll run a little animation when she goes for her second one. But first thing we gotta do is we gotta instill some air into this. She blows into the end of her low piping, puts her thumb over the end of it while the air is still trapped inside. The temperature of the glass heats the air up and it forces the air forward. It can't go through her thumb, so it goes through the glass. As long as the glass is warm enough, it will expand. As a glass blower, we, we know how glass will work based on those properties. When it's warm, we know that it'll expand there, and when it's cold, it will not. It'll contract on itself. She's using one of my personal favorite tools, and I'm sure it's both of these tools as well. Simple, simple tool that allows us to get really close to the glass and shape it. It's just a eight or ten pieces of water, rolled up newspaper, rolled into a square, and soaked into the water. It gives us nice round curves, as opposed to all the other tools that we have at our, at our disposal. <coughs> mostly all metal, some wood, but mostly all metal. A lot of these tools are eight or 900 years old in design. The design hasn't changed at all, only the way that they're made. <clears throat> and none of these tools are mass produced. They're all made by an individual, one at a time. So it's just like an artist here. They're artists at what they do. So she takes a second gather of glass, give you a quick little automation there. You look on the screen, this gives us a little cross section of what it's like. When we open up that door, we plunge our bubble down into the surface of the glass, and we rotate. Just like you gather honey on a honey gather. Just like honey, we can't stop turning. We must keep turning, otherwise gravity, basically what we're doing is trying to defy gravity. We're fighting the, the forces of it, pulling our glass towards the ground. First thing that any glass floor will do when they take a gather is they roll it into these wooden tools sitting behind her bench in these buckets of water. We call them blocks. Just like a big soup spoon made out of fruit wood. Now, in different sizes, the more glass we get, the larger the block. They're soaked in water continuously. They're made out of fruit wood because of the grain structure is really tight, so they burn out nice and evenly. Well, as there's no pitch or sap in there to steam off and stick to her glass. So again, she blows into the pipe, inflates it a little bit, and you can see as she hangs it down, that glass stretches. That's another force of nature that we have towards us. Gravity, centrifugal force, and temperature are the best things that a glass floor has to their advantage. So she just asked her assistant, we blow, please? So this is a traditionally how glass blowing is done. Your assistants squatted behind the bench and they just listen to their gaffer, the person who sits at the bench leading the team, tells them, blow, stop, harder, softer, and helps maintain control over it while she does it. So she's able to instill how much air she wants and where she wants it to go. So right now she took that ball and she kind of divided it in half, stretching that bottom portion out, making a nice long, tall neck on there. So everything that's blown has to come off of our blowpipe eventually. It has to be transferred to what will be a temporary handle so that she has access to the open side of her bubble. The way that happens is what she had just finished doing, she makes a constriction on the glass right at the head of that blowpipe. That's a weak thing. There's a lot of stress right there. So eventually when it comes time to transfer this piece off of this blowpipe so that she has access to the inside, that weak link is the first portion that will break free. If we did not put that constriction in there, that glass would not come off the pipe. We would end up either throwing it into the bucket or have to cut the pipe off and put it away. Again, she's using that rolled up wet piece of newspaper to chill and shape it. So she cools the area where she doesn't want it to expand and doesn't touch areas where she does want it to expand. 
when she goes into our reheating chamber, that's about 2300 degrees. And she's able to specifically heat certain areas. So she, we know that she's kind of going for a pitcher form. And that bottom portion that's going to be holding a lot of that liquid needs to be much larger. You can see she doesn't heat the whole thing. She's only heating that very bottom section so that that will inflate. When she goes in all the way, that's what we call a little maintenance heat, a little safety heat. If our glass gets too cold as a glass blower, that would be about 1,000 degrees, it has the chance of stressing and cracking on us. So we do these maintenance heats where we put the whole piece all the way into the reheating chamber just to keep it safe from cracking. And you can see, she just heats that bottom portion as it blow, only that bottom section in place. Now Rob has a solid iron. It's not hollow. He's going to gather up a big old blob of glass. He's going to deliver and present it to Kate. He's then going to apply it to the bottom of her bubble to make a nice little puck like foot. He stops it, falls, flips it back on center, and she winds it right on there. Hot glass will stick to hot glass. We call this process casting off because she didn't have to cut it with shears or anything. She literally used the hot material. If it gets thin enough, it'll burn itself right off. So she wound it around, and as soon as that little string got thin enough, she throws it towards the ground. That string gets so thin that it winds around that hot glass, and the hot glass melts it right off. So now a couple little tools here to make the foot shape that she wants. Glass is really pliable at this stage, so when we force it in between these two things, it will take on that profile. If she was on one side and Rob was on the other, they're squeezing this glass in between those two pieces, and it forces that into the shape that she desires. So Rob once again takes another solid rod. This time he's going to make the temporary handle. So he's going to take a much smaller gather. He's going to shape it on our stainless steel table. We call it a marver. Traditionally, it would be a thick slab of marble that we use. What he's going to do is he's going to make this piece of glass that we call a punty. P-U-N-T-Y. Shapes it very specifically so it has a kind of a small touchdown, a small little big point. So we often refer to glass as terms of Bodies and food. So eggs are really important to us when it comes to glass blowing. We have that pointier side of an egg and the, the more duller side of the egg. What he's looking for is more of that pointy side of the egg. What that does is it gives us a small connection on the bottom of her vessel so that that becomes the weak link. So when this is ready to be finished and put away into our cooling ovens overnight, that's where it will want to separate. It will want to break at this weak link because this is about the touchdown of a dime, maybe the size of a dime. Just that small little surface area will be holding that whole thing. This is a really delicate process. This is often where beginners lose a lot of their work because the temperatures need to be matched fairly close. If he's too hot and she's too hot, they'll fuse together molecularly. And they won't want to separate when it goes when it comes time to put it away into our, our oven. They're, they become one. If conversely, if they're both too cold, it might appear that they are stuck. But when she applies a drop of water onto that constricted neckline, causes a slight vibration in her pipe to crack that free from the blowpipe. It would have cracked free from both of their pipes and landed on the ground. So it's a real touchy kind of maneuver that happens. Clapping street, we love it. So this is this is probably the longest part of the process of her making this. She has a lot of heat from that furnace glass when she gathered it. She was able to do a lot of 